Music is a celebration of being human and being alive. Live music gives us a chance to celebrate this with other people. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the party has been put on indefinite hiatus. And with multiple live music venues closing permanently, the future of live music is uncertain. Being in isolation during quarantine, one begins to understand the meaning of the phrase, you don't know what you have until it's gone. Over the course of the past year, I've been frantically reading through articles and opinion pieces, looking for some sort of clue about the future of live music in Austin. My main concern is that smaller venues will inevitably get pushed out of the market due to pressures from the pandemic. We are already seeing this with the closure of venues like Barracuda, Plush, and North Door. All of these venues provided space for niche musical experiences that may prove difficult to find in the future. I reached out to many leaders in the industry, hoping for some sort of conjecture on the situation, but none replied for comment. As I thought more about it, I realized that as long as there is a supply of talent wanting to provide a unique musical experience and a demand for those experiences, the show will go on. I wanted to speak to some of these artists who can provide these experiences, so I reached out to Daniel Mabry. A singer-songwriter introduced me through a mutual friend who wrote an album over quarantine. He and I were able to chat about his background in music and his hopes for the future. Your name and just your yeah. background in music? I'm Dan Mabry. Um, I, uh, I started, I've always like had music in my life, but it never became a thing until I was telling you earlier about right. quarantine happened and uh, I've been like getting more into music as, like, a, as a listener and being more active in how I was understanding how things were made and I was like, man, I really want to write because um, I'm an artist and I make stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm an art major and I, I paint and I draw, but I never really like written music before um, and I was like, but I don't really have the time because I was working and then pandemic happened and I got sent home from the dorms and whole life was just like reset and so it's like okay priorities reassess and um, I just started I got I got into garage band and started uh, learning how to play my instrument a little bit more seriously would you hope to release another album with uh, collaborating with Kieran yeah totally Is that, like something you all are actively thinking about yeah we, we have a we have like two or three songs written right now for we don't know what we're gonna call the project yet uh, working title um, that we think is really funny is Sex Oven because that makes no sense and I love it but um, we're definitely we're definitely going to try and put an album out by the end of the summer um, not like as homemade bangs but as like a separate group because they're helping you play homemade bang stuff live but we're also a completely different band which is kind of confusing uh, but yeah we're trying to we're trying to get some songs together by the end of the summer and then maybe after that I'll come back and <laughs> write another homemade bangs album we'll see cool and then so um so yeah I mean looking like even further down the line um in terms of reopening um as things start to reopen are y'all thinking about performing live gigs maybe at Hole in the Wall or other sort of uh yeah. local venues yeah hold, like hold no would be fun if anyone if anyone wants us i think i think we'll try yeah. and make our rounds at the co-ops with like mutual friends and uh make sure make sure we're well received and um sound good together and then uh we'll, we'll try and market ourselves to some of the some of the actual venues where people come pay money to see us almost wow <laughs> so yeah and then, that's definitely a, uh, a goal yeah Dan later agreed to let me see his band rehearse at his drummer's house. Turns out, the rest of the band lives there as well, and have formed a sort of musical cooperative, lending their talents to each other to help bring their respective projects to fruition. I got a chance to talk to the drummer, Kieran Wheat, about his inspiration and where he sees Austin music going in the future. Right now, uh, back in winter of last year, me, Nick, the guy inside, and Matthew started a band called Rocking Chair Reality Room. And the main idea was like a lot of influence of King Giz, but we also like Frank Zappa. Um, yes, it's like an old prog rock band. Um, and of course, OCs. 
and we just kind of took all those ideas, but with, like, kind of sincerity in mind, you know, and originality. Um, a lot of people make great music out there, but their sound, like, you can find basically what they're making somewhere else, essentially. It's a similar sound. And that doesn't take anything away from what they're playing, but I think that if you can find kind of a niche to fit in with music, then it's a lot uh, more attractive, attractive to people. But also, like, finding that niche is part about finding your own identity, you know, and, like, figuring that out. So, really, our goal when we went into Make Music was just, like, to work through our own, like, selves and to be free and to not, you know, fuck the naysayers, you know, like, to stay true to ourselves and to make some stuff that we really enjoyed. And we've done that so far, so it's been pretty, pretty good, yeah. You know, what do you kind of envision as the, uh, you know, like the future of, you know, Austin music? Yeah. I mean, it's so hard because music is the thing that brings people together, right? And this whole pandemic is all about staying apart in a way, you know, uh, at least physically. Um, and I, I really like the virtual music idea and streaming and stuff. But that takes away so many aspects of enjoying music that are really important. You know, like going to a show, a live show, and just matching the energy of the band and like the people around you is uh, something that I don't think you can ever recreate virtually. Um, I think the future, just you know, with safety as like the most important thing, like live music will come back in small groups, and I think that. Um, there's a lot of underground kind of shows that are popping up. While those not aren't really safe, you know, that's like what people are turning to. Um, and that's not necessarily a good thing because it might endanger people, but at the same time, like, people are obviously going out and like seeking that. Um, so there, I saw this, the real answer to the question is I saw this cool costume. It's like a huge, like, you wear it around your head and it's like a hazmat helmet. I think people should all start wearing that and going to concerts and moshing around in those things. But uh, who knows, really. After talking with these talented people, I felt a newfound confidence in the future of independent music in Austin. I hope to see their dreams realized, and in so doing, my own dream of a thriving independent music scene will be realized alongside theirs.